Hi everyone and welcome to your next key study for your psychology SIL. This experiment we're going to have a look at today is called the Little Albert Experiment and this was conducted by Watson and Rayner in 1920. My name's Amy and I'm going to be taking you through this short session to look at the next key study. Before we look at the study we just need to go through a key concept called classical conditioning. This is a concept that's important in psychology and you'll re revisit this throughout the course this year. However, we're just going to go through a really brief introduction about what classical conditioning is so that you can understand the key concept so that you can then apply it to the study that we're going to have a look at. So classical conditioning is learning through association and this was first discovered by P Ivan Pavlov who is a Russian physiologist. In simple terms, this basically means that two stimuli are linked together to produce a new learned response in a person or animal. So you will learn to associate something with something else. Okay, so we'll have a look at some examples of this in a minute. So the new stimulus is presented at the same time as another stimulus that already produces the response. OK, so, for example, you could get stuck in a lift, OK, and you would associate. So before being stuck in the lift, you would have no response towards a lift. You would just get in the lift and it would be OK. But after being stuck in the lift, you now associate the lift with fear. OK, so the new stimulus is presented at the same time as another stimulus that already produces the response. OK, so you've obviously associated a lift with being scared now. So after the two have been presented together many times, the new stimulus now produces the response even after the original stimulus is not present. Okay, so it can happen with something like a lift or it could happen with something like a phobia, which we're going to have a look at in a minute. So in simple terms, it's just obviously learning to associate something that already produces a response with something that doesn't produce a response and then they become associated together okay so it is quite complicated um, but hopefully the next couple of examples will help you to understand it a little bit better so we're going to have a look at two examples of classical conditioning in real life so i'll talk you through the process of how this might happen again it's, I'm not too concerned if you don't really understand classical conditioning um, in lots of depth. We're just getting a basic understanding of it so that we can understand the key study that we're going to have a look at in a minute. So, for example, the example that I've just explained previously, you obviously get in a lift. So this is before conditioning, this is before learning that association. So remember that classical conditioning is just learning um, a, a form of learning through association. So obviously before anything happens you get in the lift and it produces no response, you're not really too concerned about getting in a lift. However, the lift then obviously becomes associated with getting stuck in the lift, so you, you now have an event where you the lift's broken down and you're now stuck in the lift and then now even when obviously you're not stuck in that lift, you just um, go into the lift on a normal sort of day-to-day um, -day basis, you now become scared when you were in the lift. So the lift has become associated with that negative event of being stuck in it and now you associate lifts with fear. Okay, so can you see this is where just a previous, so in terms of a stimuli, that's just a lift, you had no response to it, but when you've got stuck in the lift, that event has become associated with a lift and now you are scared of a lift even when um, obviously you, you just, you're not stuck in it, you're just entering the lift on a normal day. The next example is quite a common example and you might be able to associate yourself with this or relate to it. So KFC, most people like KFC, okay, can make you happy um, but obviously you eat a KFC and you're fine. However, you eat a bit of a dodgy KFC one time 
and that creates food poisoning. So the last thing you ate was KFC and you're up in the night being horrifically sick. Okay, so you get food poisoning from the KFC and you can probably guess what's going to happen next. You then have associated KFC with feeling sick okay or being sick so when you think of a kfc it makes you feel sick so you might be able to refer to that it might not necessarily be food poisoning but if you've ever had a stomach bug um and the last meal that you ate so i don't know if you had um chili before you went to bed and then you were up in the night being sick with a tummy bug you probably will be put off eating chili for quite a while so that's just um you know an easy example of classical conditioning you've associated chili with feeling sick or in this case you've associated kfc with feeling sick um, and before conditioning before that event had happened you didn't associate kfc with that particular feeling so we're going to link classical conditioning to phobias and that will help us to understand um, the Little Albert study which we'll show, I'll show you a clip of in a minute. So classical conditioning has been found to have a role in the learning of phobias. So behaviourists argue that phobias are learned when a neutral object is associated with a stimulus that already causes fear. Okay. So for example, if we use the um, example of obtaining a phobia of dogs so before anything happened before conditioning or before learning the new association again dogs don't really produce any particular emotion they might make you feel a little bit happy but it's not any sort of emotion then you get bitten by a dog and that obviously leads to you being upset or feeling hurt um, or feeling quite scared and then obviously after that, you'll then be scared of dogs, okay? So you can see that this process of learning is learning through the association, okay? So before anything happened, before that event or before learning this new association, you were fine. You then get bitten by a dog that creates obviously fear. And then after that, you've now been conditioned to have a fear of dogs. So every time you see a dog, you get panicky, sweaty, and you don't want to be near that dog. Okay, sometimes people acquire phobias of dogs through obviously being quite small and dogs running up to them. And that can be quite scary as well without, having, without the dog actually having to have sort of bitten you. So that's another example and that's linked to phobias and we're going to have a look at that in a, in a bit more detail when we look at the key study. So I'm going to show you a YouTube clip of the Little Albert study and you can either keep this video on or you can click on the link on the slide or copy it or use the QR code. Before you watch the study, if you just want to write down 1 to 10 and then write down the following questions and I would like you to answer the questions whilst watching the study. I'll show you the video once through but if you do need to go back and rewind the clip or go back to another place, please feel free to use the link to do that. Okay, so if you just pause the video now and write down the questions and then press play when you're ready and I'll show you the video. In the early part of the 20th century, psychologists John Watson and Rosalie Rayner set out to teach a baby boy called Little Albert to fear white rats using the principle of classical conditioning. This is a film of their work. The film shows several phases of their study. First, as you see here, the investigators demonstrated that prior to conditioning, Little Albert had no fear of any animals, including, of course, white rats.
and Rayner then sought to teach Albert to fear white rats through classical conditioning. In the conditioning phase of the study, which was not filmed, the investigators struck a steel bar with a hammer whenever Albert reached for a rat, making a very loud noise that greatly upset and frightened Albert. After six such pairings of the loud noise and the rat, it was believed that the boy had been conditioned to fear white rats. That is, Albert was now expected to react fearfully to white rats whether the rats were paired with loud noises or not. In this next film sequence, we see Albert interacting with a white rat after the conditioning process. The investigators believed that the child's reaction during this trial demonstrated his newly acquired fear of white rats. Finally, the investigators expected that little Albert's conditioned fear of white rats would generalize to stimuli that were similar in key ways to a white rat. In this film segment, they were trying to demonstrate that the child now also reacted fearfully to similar objects, such as a rabbit, a dog, a furry object, and a white mask worn by Watson himself. Okay, so hopefully you've managed to answer most of those questions. Again, feel free to watch the video in your own time and rewind it if you need to go back to any of those questions. Um, I am going to go through the answers next. So if you haven't completed all those questions, if you just want to pause the video and press play when you're ready, and then you can go through those questions. Okay, so let's go through the answers to those questions. So the first question, the answer was John Watson. So who was the main psychologist who carried out the study? So it was John Watson and then also Rayner as well. Question two, what was little Albert taught to fear? So obviously it was white rats. The first stage of the experiment, little Albert was shown that he had no fears of any animals including white rats so different animals were shown to little Albert beforehand and he showed no signs of fear or distress. The animals that were used to obviously at, at the start of the experiment to show little Albert were a monkey, a dog, a rabbit, a rabbit and a white rat. Question five, how does little Albert respond to the objects or animals? So before conditioning he shows no fear or no distress. During the conditioning phase of the experiment, Watson struck a steel bar each time little Albert tried to reach for the rat, which created a loud noise. And obviously, babies are scared of loud noises, so that's why he obviously was crying. Question seven, how did little Albert respond during the conditioning phase? So he showed signs of intense distress, so he was crying. It took six pairings, so that means that it took six times to obviously show little Albert the rat, make the noise with the steel bar, and then that was repeated six times. That's really important for classical conditioning because it needs to be repeated a number of times for you to obviously learn that association. So how did little Albert react to the white rat after conditioning? So he, sh he showed signs of intense distress, crying again, so even after conditioning, um, which is where they, he was shown the white rat without the, the steel bar being struck. He obviously showed intense distress. So that suggests that little Albert has learned that response. So he's now associating the white rat with the loud noise. Um, and then finally, how did little Albert react to other white objects? So this is called generalisation. He was also scared of other white objects and this showed that his phobia had been generalised onto similar objects. So we can find that through classical conditioning, sometimes that can also produce the same response um, 
if it's a similar object to the one that has been learnt or associated. Okay, so um, for example, if we go back to the KFC and food poisoning, um, if you ate some breaded chicken that wasn't from KFC, you might also um, feel nauseous even if it isn't from KFC. So if it's a similar stimuli, then obviously that will produce a similar response. So check your answers to those questions um, and hopefully you've got lots right. Okay, the last task that I would like you to do is I'd just like you to answer a couple more questions and these involve you to think a little bit more about the study and how it was conducted. So if you'd like to write these questions down on a piece of paper, so one to six and then write the questions down and then the next slide um, will include the, in the study written out in full. Okay, so I'll just talk you through some of these questions to begin with. So the aim of the experiment, that's quite self-explanatory when you look at the study, that's basically just what was Watson and Rayner setting out to achieve? What was their aim of the experiment? What were they investigating? Um, the baseline tests were the tests that obviously were given um, to little Albert before the study so that's thinking about the baseline showing him the animals before the study and then obviously seeing his response to that and then the next couple of questions are sort of based on your opinion as well so do you think the study would be allowed to be carried out today is it ethical so essentially the psychologists have given little Albert a phobia okay and obviously he's scared now of all white objects sort of white fluffy objects um question four do you think watson and Raina should have done the study on more than one baby so do you think it should have been done on more than one baby what 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 are your thoughts on that um what does the study suggest about classical conditioning and phobias can phobias be learned through association and finally do you think there are any other ways we can acquire phobias or is this the only way in terms of learning it through classical conditioning? So maybe um, think a little bit further with this one in terms of evolution. So do you think that maybe phobias are learnt um, or we're passed down, you know, phobias are passed down through natural selection to um, obviously enable us to survive? What do we think about that one? Okay, so that's just having a little think about them. Um, Again, there might not necessarily be right or wrong answers um, for three, four, five and six. But if you just have a think about them and jot down your ideas for those questions, that's absolutely fine. So once you've written the questions down, again, just pause the video and press play when you're ready. And the information for those answers to those questions, you can have a read through the study, write up and then use anything in there that you think um, is relevant to those questions. So this is um, the write up of the study it's a short summary of the study um, so again have a read of it it goes into a little bit more detail than the YouTube clip um, and then use those to answer the six questions on the previous slide okay so that's the end of the lesson I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've enjoyed learning about the little Albert study and we're really looking forward to seeing you in September thank you